The threat of nuclear war has never been more real than right now. President Putin has ordered Russia's nuclear forces to be placed on high alert. We will use them. The prospect of nuclear conflict, once unthinkable, is now back within the realm of possibility. However, this isn't the first time that the world was under this nuclear threat. In fact, since the development of the nuclear bomb, competing nations have been working to build a more destructive weapon of war to take out their opponent. What many people don't realize is that the city of Los Angeles is completely surrounded by nature. There's 19 million people in the greater Los Angeles area, and when you come up here, you can feel like you're completely alone. And what's wild about the Santa Monica Mountain Range is there's over 45 species of mammals up here, from like squirrels and gophers and rabbits to some big animals like bobcats, coyotes, and even mountain lions. However, in these mountains lies a chapter in our history that we might want to forget, but probably never should. This is the trail up to LA-96C, which was central in the defense of the greater Los Angeles area during the Cold War. Right now I'm hiking up the backside of this mountain range, and you can see when you look on a map, this was a very strategic location for the defense of the city and this entire region. Now the Cold War was a period of geopolitical tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States. It's said to have started in 1947 with the Truman Doctrine, which was basically an American policy that said that we were gonna protect other nations around the world that were in threat of being attacked by the Soviet Union. And also at this time, there was the threat of the US mainland being attacked as well. In 1949, the Soviet Union tested an atom bomb. And in response, President Truman said that the US would develop an even more destructive weapon, the hydrogen bomb. The first hydrogen bomb test was performed in the Marshall Islands, and it just showed how fearsome the nuclear age could be. There was a 25-mile firebomb that blew a hole in the ocean floor and could take out half of Manhattan. As tensions began to rise between the Soviet Union and the United States, these mountains became a very strategic location for the U.S. military. From 1953 to 1979, the U.S. Army built 280 missile sites to be able to be the last line of defense from an incoming attack from the Soviet Union. This is one of those sites. So just walking into this site, you have the, the sentry post right here. And this was manned 24 hours. And there was actually a whole set of guard dogs that patrolled the area to keep out unwanted visitors. This was a heavily guarded site. And being how isolated this is, it's about a mile from the nearest road, and we're basically out middle of nowhere on top of these mountains. So this bridge goes to the target tracking radar system. And this was used to follow planes out in the Pacific if they were coming to bomb Los Angeles. Now these were put all over the US to be strategic positions to respond quickly to an incoming attack. And the Pentagon chose this location because it's the highest point above LA. And so this system could be like the watchdog over this entire region. The soldiers here were on 15 minute alert. They were quick to respond if anything happened. So if this radar system picked up a signal of an airplane approaching, the computers here would send a signal down to the San Fernando Valley where the companion site housed all the Nike missiles. And within a few minutes, they would launch a strike destroying the airplanes before they could get to the mainland. Now the missiles that would be activated if there was an incoming threat would be the Nike Ajax missiles. And these had a range of 30 miles and could travel at 70,000 feet in the air. Now these just had a conventional warhead on the tip. They were eventually replaced by the Nike Hercules missiles, which had a range of 100 miles and they had a nuclear warhead on the tip. And those could fly up to 150,000 feet in the air. So to give you some context, planes typically fly between 31,000 and 39,000 feet in the air. Now these missiles traveled at Mach 3, which is three times the speed of sound. 
Now, to put that in context of something that you know makes sense, that's 10 football fields per second, and that's how fast they were moving. Now, if you account for inflation, these missiles cost around $600,000 per each missile, and they had multiple missiles at each site all across the 280 sites throughout the country. It's kind of surreal to look out over the city and just imagine what it would be like living back in the Cold War era. And if there was a bomber approaching, within minutes you would hear missiles firing into the skies. And if the planes were close enough, you would actually hear the nuclear explosion out over the Pacific. And it's just crazy to think about that was a potential reality living here in Los Angeles. Now walking around this base, there's not much left. There's the huge radio tower up there in the distance, but behind me over here, there used to be a set of trailers that housed all the computers that basically read all the data. And if there was an approaching enemy, they would send it down to the San Fernando Valley over there where the companion site would launch the missiles. Those computers were massive. Nowadays, they fit in the size of your phone. And within 15 minutes of being notified that there was an oncoming airplane, they would launch a Nike missile that would send off over the ocean to take it out. And these missile locations were all over Los Angeles. There was 16 different sites that housed Nike missiles ready to take off at any moment's notice. By the late 1960s, newer intercontinental ballistic missiles were developed by both the Soviet Union and the United States. And because of that new tech, these sites became obsolete because they were no match for those newer improved missiles. Eventually, this Nike base was considered a surplus for the US military, so it was abandoned and offered to the state as parkland. For a while, the base became dilapidated and overgrown, and it was just a mystery alongside Mulholland Drive. However, there were a few people who did see a vision for making this into a park. And after years of bureaucratic red tape, they opened it up in 1996 to what it is today, a place where you can come explore and see a piece of history about the Cold War era. Now to get up here, it's just a short hike from the valley side of the mountain range. But if you come from the Santa Monica side, it's actually about a 10 mile trail all the way from the beach up to this peak. And what's interesting is you pass Murphy Ranch on the way up here, which is another video I've done here on my channel that's all about a weird history around a group of Nazi sympathizers that built a compound in these mountains. And you pass it to make your way up here. Coming up here and exploring these ruins makes me realize how close we are to war and how close we've been to war for generations. I mean, the technology that was used up here across this entire base can now fit in the size of a cell phone. And as the technology develops, the weapons of war just get more and more destructive. I wish I could end this on more of a positive note, but war is happening in the world. And as tensions escalate between superpowers, the threat of a nuke is actually plausible. And unfortunately, the only thing keeping us safe right now is this idea of mutually assured destruction. So if one country decides to drop a nuke on another country that has nukes, well, it's game over. And hopefully that is enough of an idea to keep us out of going into a, a full-blown nuclear war.